I want to talk with you about cows. And I'm actually, some people call me the cow whisperer, but I'm actually more a cow listener. And I also listen a lot to farmers. So I want to tell you a story about cows and about taking care of cows. It started when I was a young kid on the family farm of my, my parents. And I always took care of the sheep, and my, my dad was always calling me out when there was a sheep that needed lambing, because I had nice small hands. But now they're a bit bigger at the moment. But I used to do the deliveries when I was 10 years old. So I was sitting down on my knees, and uh, the sheep was laying down in front of me, so I was just going in that sheep, first washing, gluing, everything, and then there was a reposition. The head was on the wrong side, and the leg, and I did my funny tricks, and then the lamb came out. And I was a happy man, sheep was happy, my dad was happy. Then I was standing up, and then I saw two wet knees. Two wet knees. I said, hey, Dad, the bed of the sheep is too wet. And then my mom came. I told you, Joop, you should put more straw in that bed. Come on, put more straw in. And my dad said, no, 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 no. Um, listen, this costs money. My dad studied on the Agriculture University in Wageningen, and he stu studied agriculture economics. My dad knew about, uh, my, my mother knew about taking care of kids. We had four kids in the family, and she made a nice warm nest for the kids, and she wanted to have a nice warm nest for the sheep. So that dilemma, what I'm just telling between my mom and my dad, is very universal. On every dairy farm in the world, there's this big dilemma between um, let's take care of the cows and let's take care of ourselves. So what are you going to do? And I'm the product of both of them, so I take care of both. And that is the winning system. So what are you going to do? Um, you're going to study vet school, of course. I was really into, I was very proud of, of delivering sheep and helping sheep and helping farmers. So my uncle and my dad inspired me. I went to vet school. And in vet school, I learned a lot of good things. We had three very good professors, Ari Brandt, Inte Heinz Schurke, and Jos Noordhuizen. They studied, they told us all about keeping cows healthy, about preventive medicine, how to take care of cows, and how to do the good job. When you're a vet, you have to take care of cows, keep them healthy. So then I went into practice, and what happened in practice, I came in, the first farm, I think, okay, pretty good, and then the next farm, I was like, ooh, this is not so nice. And then you see cows like this, and they're suffering and pain on their hooves. And then I walk to the next barn, I think, ooh, this cow is about to die. Not so nice. And I found myself treating sick cows for two, three years, two years in, in practice, treating sick cows and not working on prevention. I think, hey, something went wrong here, because I really want to work on prevention. And what do we do? We're curing sick cows. So then I changed my, um, my career, and I went into um, uh, uh, advising. And we started our first company. And we said, well, if 50% of the dairy cows suffer pain at the moment in the world, what are we going to do? There's a lot of disease, and you can read all the, all the text, but 50% of the cows is somewhere not really right. So Jan and I, Jan Huls, my colleague from, uh, from, uh, from the company, we started Cow Signals. And this was very, very challenging because we had workshops of farmers. And the first workshop was actually with um, the Dutch uh, Farmers Union. We had 10 farmers together and in a group. And this was a health project. This was starting by the, the, the Dutch um, uh, dairy service without any vets. So a health project without vets. So an old vet called us, hey guys, something is happening. They start a health project without vets. So that couldn't happen. So we called in and we went to that um, uh, office and said, oh yeah, you can, you can join, but we have no money, so you can do it for free. So okay, no problem, we do it for free. We want to be involved. So we did this uh, first uh, year of trainings, five trainings with farmers. Very nice, and we learned a lot from each other. And then we, um, we said, Jan and I, we have to make a course that they see cows better, because in these five trainings they were looking at individual subjects, but they didn't have the overview anymore. And then we started Cow Signals as a training. And that was really, really challenging, because farmers were excited. Two out of ten farmers were seeing most of the signals, but eight out of ten farmers 
hardly saw anything in the barn. They were very busy with all kinds of management issues, but they didn't know where to look for. So it was a big success, and we found out that empty rumens, for example, the, the danger triangle on the side of the cow, only two out of 10 farmers is using this on a daily management control, but the rest is hardly ever looking at it. And this means this cow didn't eat for six hours, and that's bad. Cows like to eat every two hours. And if they don't eat for six hours, they are hungry, and they get sick. So we said to the farmers, well, know where to look for, ask the right questions, see the red spots on the cow, and learn from the cow, and, and tell me what you're going to do. So, so this here was very well spread over the world. Thick hogs, infection on the hogs, is really bad. So what are we going to do about it? So we said, why? Because wise will make you wiser. So we're going to do a little test here. Uh, what do you see in this picture? How good are you in observing cows? So you got a uh, one minute test now to see what you can see on this picture. And most farmers are telling me, I have no time and I have no money. And then I said, well, what are you going to do about it? If you have no time and no money, you have to change something. You have to do something to get more time and more money. We all suffer the same time management issues every day. So we said you have to check six things. Feed water, light, air, rest, and space. And if you have these six things organized, you suddenly have healthy cows. And the right side of the diamond, the cow signals diamond, is very, very cheap, right? Right, left, right, left brain. The right side, water, light, and air, is, doesn't cost much. So get it in as much as you can, and then you earn more money. And then you can also invest in rest, space, and feed. And all these farmers were very excited, and they were really seeing new opportunities. And they find out that it's not only taking care of cows, actually it is like taking care of cows, it's taking care of yourself. It's the same thing. If you do something better for the cow, she pays you back <coughs> in longer lifetime, more milk, and less trouble. So farmers were very excited. So what do we do in this farm? What do you think? What is the most critical signal? You've been watching it. You got 30 seconds to talk with your neighbor and tell your neighbor what you see on this picture. Come on, do it. So what do you see first? What do you see in this picture? What can we do better? Yeah. Empty cows with empty rumens standing in the cubicles there with empty rumen. Okay, what else? What else can we do? What it's first about observing, carefully observing the cows and the barn, the big picture, and then the details. And if you've seen everything, you're going to judge what are we going to do in this farm to make things better, to let cows live longer. There's no food on the table, and this is a very big thing that very few people see, very good. They don't feed the whole length, and they don't have a nice soft bed, and they can't easily come to the feeding table. What was that? What was that? <laughs> So um, a few things you can change and that you can change tomorrow. Just give the cows more feed over the whole length. And that is so simple that you can't believe it that we have to tell this to 90% of the dairy farmers in the world. Always have feed over the whole length. You recognize lame cows with a curved back. Eh? The, left, the, the right foot is lame. Eh? You see a bit of a dirty floor. You see hard beds. And you see all kinds of standing and waiting cows. And we have been teaching farmers a standing cow is your best management advisor because she's telling you what's wrong. So taking care of cows is taking care of yourself. Do something that these cows can eat and rest. Two essentials in life, and that's why I've never been sick. I always eat and I rest, and that's the secret of, of a long life. So how long do cows live? So you can tell your neighbor again, just uh, give, it, give, it, give, it, give a figure to your neighbor. What do you think, how long do cows live? How long do cows live? In the world? Five years. Dairy cows. Four or five, five years? That's a pretty good guess. So first of all, the first two years, and some farms is two and a half years, they are very unproductive. They are just raised. Okay, We have to raise them to have the first calf, and after they have the first calf, they can start giving milk, and then we're going to harvest the milk. So the first two years are very improductive. But after two years, the young stock starts to give milk. So now my question is again, how many uh, years of producing milk, how many productive years do we have? What do you think? 
2.4 is a very good guess, and that's probably 2.5 is the world average. So how much will it be in Holland? What do you think, in Holland? 20,000 cows in Holland, 20,000 farms with 80 cows. Less than two and a half, <laughs> he thinks. Well, the good news is 3.4. But an interesting question is to ask yourself, why do people get always older and cows only get younger? Because it was 3.5 in 2011, and it's, uh, 2000, it's, it's now a year later, it's 3.4. Uh, but the good news is, on the best 1% farms, it's six years. So my statement is here. Let's double the lifetime of cows. Let's double the productive lifetime of cows, going from two and a half to five years. And then we have a huge impact on the world. And it's possible, because the cows already do it. The 1% best farms in Holland already reach six lactations and 60,000 liters of milk. So that is amazing. And this was a little research we did uh, several years ago with four farmers. And we, um, we checked from the 3,000 customers that time, um, the best 30. And they were already on 60,000 liters, six, six and a half years of lifetime. Amazing results. And so the farmers already know how to do it, but only the very top layer. In every country you find them, these really good farmers that do everything right. And that is, I have a great respect for these guys. Then we were looking at the very best farms in Holland. There's 22,000 cows that have been reaching 100,000 liter level. That's a lot of milk. And a lot of cows reaching it. And there's one farmer with, 50, with 45 cows reaching 100,000 liters. And then we checked um, on, these, on, uh, on, these, um, on this, in this research with all these long-living cows. And we find out that this 1% farmers, that the cows actually, all of these cows had a soft bed. And that time, 95% had a, had a mat or a mattress, but a deep straw bed, a deep, soft straw bed. And that was all these 30 farms. So this was no exception anymore, no, no, no coincidence. This was real. This was a major success factor. So we get triggered and we start studying success factors. What else? What else makes a difference? Comparing good and bad all the time. And then we had this, um, uh, this holy cow reaching 11 lactations. So again, what do you think? If these cows produce 11 lactations, what will be the most efficient lactation from these 11? What do you think? Let's do a little test. We go down from 10. 11 is not the case. So who thinks 10? 10 is the highest lactation of an 11-year-old cow. 10, 9, 8, 7. Can I see fingers? 8, 6, 5, 6, 5, yeah, okay. 4, 3, 2. Okay, sometimes it's two. In America, a lot of cows is two because they never reach three. <laughs> so it's really sad. But of the Dutch cows, the best Dutch cows, the sixth and the seventh lactation are equally high. And eight, nine, and ten is higher than, than, than one, two, and three. So there's a huge thing to gain if we can let those cows live longer. We, had a, we, had, we do a lot better job. And there I need your help. I really need your help because we're trying hard to make this un understood by people, but we don't, write, we don't reach the right people yet. Cows deserve a longer and better life. That's my opinion. Farmers deserve a better income. They work really hard for the money. And uh, together, we need to save the world. And if we have less cows, less young stock, if we double the lifetime of cows, we only need half of the young stock. With half of the young stock, we diminish the, the methane in the world with at least 15%. That's a huge diminishing. And if we bring back the, the, the raising time of a heifer from two and a half years to two years, that's another huge impact, another 20% reduction. So there's huge opportunities in the dairy industry to do things better. But we need some power, and we also want to have healthy food. How does that work? i tell you how it works and what, what the three key things are that we can do. It's very simple. Give the cows a good bed, which is soft and long enough. And also, make it really, really soft, okay? We want to make life easy for cows so that they can stand up easy, rest enough, and also eat enough. If they can stand up more easy, they will stand up more often, and they will go for food 14 times a day. And this is the result of all this lack of space. What do you see here? Here you see a big cow. And a big cow 
is two meters long from her front knees till her tail. And the bed is only one meter seventy. And this is sort of the world standard. The beds are too short. It's like me in Italy. I'm really sometimes in Italy and that's really, really small beds with wooden pallets and I'm just sitting like this, laying in the bed like this. And uh, the good thing is I don't shit in my bed, but cows do. <laughs> and I can survive a week. Eh? I'm just uh, skiing and snowboarding. So what is Switzerland doing? Switzerland is really, really good. They actually make big beds and they have a law for that. So probably the most happy cows in the world live in Switzerland. They take care of their cows. They give the bed enough space. By law, it has to be 190, 195, minimum 195 for big cows, and the width 125. And this is a big success factor because cows are not getting wounded. It's very simple, but you need rules and you need tools. So how do you get rules and tools? So we started our barn design company uh, uh, with our team because we saw that nobody was picking it up. So we were in practice starting barn design because somebody had to do it. The barn designers didn't understand cows well enough to design a barn. So we designed barns with sand beds, with maximum grip on the floor, with very soft beds, sand or straw, and you see all these cows resting. We also created a lot of airflow in the buildings. And this really made a difference. The biggest stress moment in life is probably this one here. Just before and, befo and after the delivery. And it's the same with people and the same with cows. So we say we need a maternity hotel for cows. We have to do something better. If we, if we see that almost all the disease, more than 75% of the cows who get sick, are getting sick in the first month after calving, then we do something wrong in that process of calving. And then we start to make design stress-free calving lines. We're not so smart, no, we just learn it from the best farmers in the world. And they were telling us, hey, um, I did this, and now my, my, my replacement rate went back from 35% to 20%. So I have a lot less replacement in my herd because my cows get older. And they don't get sick anymore. So the last big success factor is actually feed intake. Cows really want to eat all at the same time. And how does it feel when you're that 20 or in the cow world, it's 40, 50% sometimes. They can't eat with the herd. A cow is a herd animal and a flight animal. So the cow really likes to do things with the herd. And you can see that when they are in the field. They all graze, and that's really nice. They all graze and chew and lay down and then they chew. The cows are very relaxed animals and they, they like to do that, like people. But this is not nice if you can't eat with the group and in the end you will eat less. So these three things are easy to do, but we can't do it alone. We've been trying hard, and we are in 51 countries already, working on better cow health. And we've got 200 trainers, a franchise uh, group of trainers that are educated by, by, by me personally to do the right thing in their country. We have 30 countries already active. And we made instruction books. And we now start a video website where, we, where we're going to sell the information to the world that they can actually see this common sense information. Sharing the secrets of dairy farming with the rest of the world. Because there's a lot to improve, and it's not that difficult. So for cows, it's a big win, because they will live five years without disease, so they are more happy. And for the farmer, he has le a lot less trouble, because he doesn't have to take, take care of his sick cows all the time and jab them with antibiotics and, 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 and kill them and bring new ones in. So the big impact, I think, is for the planet, the sustainability because your cows will produce a lot less methane. All the cows in the world are blamed, and we're going to hear about that tomorrow. So if we do a better job, we can have a huge reduction in methane. Cows get more efficient when they get older. We need less young stock. So it's a win-win situation. And the last one is healthy food. Are you going to give your children milk from happy cows or from cows that suffer? And that is the question. So. So the, maybe one of, the, one of the last questions is, this can't be true, all right? What, what, is the, what, is the, what is the catch here? I don't know, there isn't any. If you let cows rest one hour more per day, she'll produce one liter more milk. And we can easily go from nine hours resting, the average resting time of a cow in the world, to 14. 
and a heifer coming new in a herd, she only rests seven hours, she's full of stress, seven hours instead of 14. So what do we did? We did writing all these things down, and we call it the healthy cow guideline. And that's how to keep he cows happy and healthy. And I'm very happy to send you this report. It's, um, it's just a simple three papers, three pieces of paper, what tells you this is how we should keep cows. And this is the best management information from the best farms in the world. And it's tremendous good ideas in there. And this is it, how it looks like. It's a two-row system, one bed per cow, easy food, at least two drinkers per cow group, and a very nice fresh air in the building. It's not that difficult. We've been also studying uh, stress-free stockmanship. That's another big bottleneck, because the differences are not only the building, right? The differences are the total management concept and the knowledge of the farmer. And that is where things go wrong. So we're learning every day from farmers in, in all these countries, and they're telling us how we can do better. And one of the things is the, is the stress-free stockmanship. Don't go behind the cow, because she will turn around, because she can't see you. And don't try to get a cow in a place where she doesn't want to be. And if she doesn't want to walk, it's not, it's not a stupid cow. No, it's probably an ignorant farmer. So what can you do to move the cow, and how can you train them as, as little babies? So there's a lot of things to gain there. And one big issue on cow health and welfare, and people get very upset, is the lameness. Cows are lame and sore. And in Holland, it's only 25% only, because the rest of the world is a lot more. Especially in America, in New York State, it's now 50%. I'm, I'm, I'm just lying, 54% of the big dairies in New York State. And people in New York have no clue. They don't know, and they probably don't even care. But I do care, and I think it's ridiculous. So we designed these barns that you've just seen, and we designed 500 of them. We have a, use, a very good building team in our, in our company that do the right job. And we have been proving that we have only less than 5% mastitis and less than 5% lameness in these barns. And the best managers, they, they go as far back as 2%. And now I mean 2% per year, right? That is two cases of mastitis per year. And that's because of soft or big sand beds, grip on the floor, one feeding place per cow, and a very good stress-free calving life. And lameness is killing the cow, so we can't accept that. So please, please listen to the cow, because the cow, she's got know-how. If you want to know more about it, you have to ask her, and she will tell you. Cows are very smart, and our best farmers are also very smart. So another last question for you, because I need your help. And this is the case. Farmers listen very well to farmers, but they don't listen very well to advisors. Why would that be? Farmers having the overview, so they really like each other as coach. And cows can't think. Uh, what did you say? Herd instinct, yeah. Farmers listen to the, the farmers in the same herd. Well, actually, the point is that farmers listen to farmers, and they don't listen very well to advisors, because the most advisors are quite single-issue advisors. They know very much about feeding, or technique, or economy, or building, or breeding, or health, but there are few advisors having the overview. So they listen to advisors, but they don't really act on what advisors say. So please... All of you, wherever you are in the world, whatever you do, invest in training. That's what I'd like you to do. Between farmers, on farm, to have happy cows and healthy cows. And that we can be very happy about the milk, eh? the milk from the healthy cow, not suffering pain, not being lame. Taking care of cows is taking care of yourself. Coming back to the story of my dad, um, well, he learned a lot. He's 71 now, my mom is too. And um, they're actually uh, putting a bit more straw in. So they've they settled. More straw, dry knees, and the lambs can calf quietly. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.